Hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for tuning once again into Mama Sanity. Um, I'm doing a video today and it's um, quite long and I do apologize up front, but um, I'm going to read a little bit of inspiration and scriptures. And then um, the other day, what I found was a whole bunch of inspirational stories on Pinterest from people. So they're true stories, they actually happen. And I wrote a ton of them down, to me like five hours. I wrote a bunch of them down and I'm just gonna share um, today. I think there's seven stories I wanna share with you that all kind of tie in together. Um, and what I'm trying to accomplish with this is to show that there still is good in the world, even with all this craziness that's going around. I believe there was another shooting at a school. I mean, just you know all these the, these floods and and tornadoes and just a lot of bad stuff happening um i just want to kind of try and get your attention on something good and know that there still are good things that happen in, in this world and that god uses us to kind of show people that they're still good in the world so let me get started um life is full of disappointments failures and setbacks None of those can permanently stop you. You have the power in you to overcome anything that life throws at you. There is nothing as powerful as a made up mind. So surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter and support you in ways that matter the most. No person, situation, or circumstance can define who you are. Do not give up or cave in or, or stop believing that it's possible. It is not over until you win. I wanted to start off with that because it, it, it's so true. It's you know saying believe in yourself and surround yourself with positive people and don't give up on your dreams, which I've talked several times about that. And then this is a little quote that I got on Pinterest. It says, Jesus whispers to you, I am the calm in your storm in your spirit when times are rough. I am the shelter during the storms that can rage about you throughout your days. It will not always be difficult, even though it may seem like the battle you are in is never ending. I have come so that you might have rest. When you are faced with adversary, adversity and you don't know what to do, turn to me. When your hope begins to fade, turn to me. When you have little strength, turn to me. I will show you the way. I will fix I will fill you with a new hope and I will give you strength. You will get through this. Never forget how far you've come, everything you have gotten through, all the times you have pushed on, even when you felt like you couldn't, and all the mornings that you didn't want to get out of bed, no matter and you got out of bed no matter how hard it was. Don't forget all the times that you wanted to give up, but you got through another day. Never forget how much strength you have learned to develop along the way. Sorry, that was so long, but I wanted to share that with y'all because like it says, Jesus is the answer. He is the way, he's a way maker. You know, all the storms that you're going through, I've said before, um, just reach out your hand and, and grab onto him and he will give you the strength to get through what you need to get through. And also what helps is if you do, think about the past that you've gone through and you think about the times where, oh my gosh, I can't believe I made it through that and focus on that and focus on the little miracles throughout your life that God has given you, that kind of lifts you up and helps you to realize when you are going through a tough time, hey, I've been through a tough time before, I can get through it. So like I said, there's seven stories that I wanna share with you. Some are short, some are long, so please bear with me. I hope y'all stay till the end because these are really, really awesome stories. Um, some of these, when I first read them, I kind of cried because it was like, whoa. Some of them gave me chills. Um, and some of them I've heard before. So let's get started. A dad comes home drunk and mad. He pulls out a gun and shoots his wife and turns the gun on himself and pulls the trigger. The little girl sits behind the couch crying. The police came and took the little girl to a new family, and she went to her first Sunday school church. Sunday school at church. She walks past the building and sees a picture of Jesus on the cross. How did that man get off the cross, she asked. The teacher replied, he didn't. The girl then argued, yes, he did. Because that night my mommy and daddy died, 
He sat next to me behind the couch telling me everything was going to be okay. Oh my goodness, I got chills when I read that. And I've, I've heard that story before. Um, and it just goes to show, I know a lot of y'all are like, like Jesus really appeared to her and he was sitting there comforting her. Well, he did, and that's the only way that she knew this person is she saw, she knew that somebody was comforting her that night that her dad shot her mom and himself. She was scared. Somebody was next to her, a man, saying it's going to be okay. She got taken to a new family, went to the church for the very first time, saw Jesus up on the cross, and said, hey, that was the man next to me crazy huh okay next story angel ride I gave a man a ride today he couldn't stop crying he was walking across town with flowers in his hand and I stopped and asked him where could I take him he said the cemetery he was still crying and said God bless you I took him to the cemetery and waited for him I could hear him talking to the headstone and what I heard changed my life he said mom I made you a promise when I was young, I would buy you flowers each year of your birthday. Today is your birthday, and I thought I was going to have to break that promise because I was going to take my own life today. But this woman came out of the middle of nowhere, so generous and godly, and she offered me a ride to you. She noticed me and told me that God has a plan for me, and she probably thinks I'm crazy because I can't stop crying, but I can't stop crying because she said her name is Emily. That's your name, Mom. You saved me. Like I said, all these gave me chills and got me emotional. This is; These are all true. Um, and it just, it does. It gives me chills right now when I'm reading it because God puts you, he puts people in certain places at certain times. And I don't know what was going on in this man's life. You know, his mom died apparently when he was young. I don't know what's happened in between, but he wanted to take his own life. And... God and his mother up there, you know, talked and said, no, 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 that's not going to happen. It's not his time. And they sent this angel who had the same name as his mom to save him. And he brought her the flowers. And now I'm, he's, he wrote the story. He's, he's not dead. So that is way awesome. Um, Christina's bucket list. There is a girl named Christina Chesterman, a 21-year-old nursing student who had a bucket list for her life that included traveling the world, riding a camel, and flying an airplane. Late September, she was hit by a drunk driver while riding her bike home from studying. A few days later, she was pronounced dead. Because Christina was an organ donor, her heart went to Susan Vieira, a 64-year-old woman with congestive heart failure who has now vowed to complete every item on Christina's bucket list so that even the rest of her so that even if the rest of her will never fulfill her dreams at least her heart will isn't that just amazing you know this lady doesn't know doesn't know Christina but yes she has her heart but how wonderful is it that this person said you know what yes I may be old and I've congestive heart failure but she gave me her she lost her life so I can have my life I'm going to do what was on her bucket list because she was so young. Isn't that just amazing? There are amazing people left in this world, I promise. Next story. <clears throat> Last week, I took my children to a restaurant, and my six-year-old asked if he could say grace. As we bowed our heads, he said, God is good. God is great. Thank you for the food. And I would thank you a little more if my mom gets us ice cream for dessert and liberty and justice for all. Amen. Along with laughter from the other customers nearby, I heard a woman make a remark. That is what is wrong with this country and these kids today. Not The kids don't even know how to pray. Asking God for ice cream? <sighs> I never. Hearing this, my son burst into tears and asked me, Did I do it wrong? Is God really mad at me? As I held him and assured him that he did a terrific job and that God was certainly not mad at him, an elderly man approached the table and winked at my son and said, I happen to know that God thought that was a great prayer. Really? My son said. Cross my heart, the man replied. Then a theatrical whispered, he added, indicating the woman whose remarks started the whole thing. Too bad she never asked God for ice cream. A little ice cream is good for the soul sometimes. 
Naturally, I bought my kids ice cream at the end of the meal. My son stared at his for a moment, then he did something I will remember for the rest of my life. He picked up his ice cream sundae, and without a word, he walked over and placed it in front of that woman. With a big smile, he told her, Here, this is for you. Ice cream is good for the soul sometimes, and my soul's pretty good already. Isn't that just amazing? You know, Joyce talks about God wanting to be in every little detail of your life. Big, small, when you're getting dressed, when you're doing your hair, makeup, when you're driving down the street, when you're whatever. You know, and this kid, he's six years old. He's asking, you know, please, I want ice cream or whatever. And I'm not saying everything you ask you're going to get, but he wants to be in everything. And I'm sure that this woman is just, wow. Wow this six-year-old kid who she thought wasn't raised right and thought what's wrong with our world, they're asking God for ice cream, you know, how could you dare do that, gives this woman the ice cream and said, it's good for the soul, I have a good soul. Isn't that just wonderful? Okay. Next story, let's see, sorry, I haven't marked, okay. <clears throat> this one's a little long, so, but it's really good. Two of my children suffer from a rare genetic bone disorder disease, and they both have recently had major surgery. My 10-year-old has had a hip rebuilt, and he is using a wheelchair, while my 13-year-old had a tumor taken out of his ankle, and he is using a walker. The 10-year-old also uses a walker to move from his chair to the car. I am parked in a handicapped space, and I'm trying to get them loaded into the car. There are six open spaces, remember that, six open spaces, but this elderly man decides he needs the space directly next to mine. The elderly man says, honking his horn, get out of my way, me, I need to get my kids loaded in the car and I'll be out of your way shortly, sir. The elderly man, honking even louder, scaring my 10 year old son, get out of my way, lady, you don't even need that spot me sir my two disabled children do need this spot but there are several open spots if you're in a hurry by this time i have had my wheelchair bound child in the car i set his walker aside to push the chair in the back of my car and retrieved my old, older son's walker from the other side of the car unfortunately i'm not fast enough the elderly man honks again, then he bullies his way into the spot and drives over the walker. I am nearly in tears and I just put my head down and tried to get the wheelchair folded up and put into the trunk of my car as fast as possible. The elderly man gets out of the car while I, was, while I have the chair halfway from the ground to the truck. The elderly man says, you are very rude. You should be ashamed of yourself. You shouldn't be using this spot. It's obvious you don't need it. I said, I'm sorry that you feel that way. As the elderly man leaves, two young men who look like thugs approach me. The young men say, we've seen everything and feel that happened and feel really bad for you. Can we help you get the wheelchair and the walkers into your car? Me crying and trembling. Yes, thank you. Not only do the young men get the medical equipment in my car, but they get the 10-year-old laughing again with their nonstop jokes after they finish helping me. I say, thank you. How can I do anything to repay your kindness? The young guys go, we're just doing what any decent people would do. I wanted to share that story because again, yes, there are cruel people in this world, there are evil people in this world, there are disrespectful people in this world, but you can't judge a book by its cover. These people that she thought, oh, these are young guys, you know, this elderly man is honking and yelling at me. I'm sure she's thinking these, this, these two young guys who are probably dressed not so wonderful, you know, they look a little rough around the edges, they're probably gonna hassle her too. And in all reality, they help her and they do what decent, pe they were raised right. We're doing what decent people would do. So just know that there are still good people in this world, and I want you to remember that the next time somebody cuts you off or, or says something mean to you. You know, I was in Walgreens the other night. Um, my son um, fell on, my oldest son, he fell on a skateboard and cut his ear open, and we had to go get him some antibiotics. 
and I'm waiting in line and the cashier is helping this couple and it's taking a little while but she's obviously trying to do everything she can to help this couple she's looking on the computer I guess they're asking questions and the lady behind them kept saying how long is it gonna be how long is it gonna be and she was like I, you know ma'am I'm sorry I don't know I'm trying to hurry well after like three minutes the lady start, storms off and she says you know what never mind it's getting dark and I have to walk home you took too long Oh my goodness like the the lady had already called for backup to help you know but anyways there are cruel people in this world but there are wonderful decent people in this world is what is what I'm trying to say and I told that lady when that lady walked out the door I told the cashier don't worry about it you're doing a great job you're doing what you're supposed to be doing so don't let her bother you okay um, let's see sorry two more stories and I'm done I promise today my 14 year old held a yard sale he was reluctant and stayed on his phone most of the time. Then a mother and a daughter came up clearly financially troubled, and the mother, mother told me her daughter was just diagnosed with pancreatic cancer three days ago. Her daughter asked my son how much the stuffed bear was. My son looked right at her and said, give me the biggest smile you've got. The little girl gave that smile her awe. Then he handed her the teddy bear and said, that smile was worth a million dollars, kiddo. The mother was so proud. I wanted to share that with y'all because, you know, I know teenagers get a real bad rep. I've got a teenager. There's times, um, you know, I think my teenager's wonderful compared to a lot of other teenagers I've seen. Um, and he's not as great as, you know, but, and, and so I know teenagers get a bad rap and they're going through all these changes and they're going through so much. And like I said at the beginning of the story, the teenager, he didn't really want to be there. He was on his phone, but he was raised right. The mother raised him right. He saw this little girl. He, he knew that she, you know, he probably heard that she was sick. He, he could see that she didn't have a lot of money, but she really wanted the bear. And he could have said, being a normal teenager, oh, it's a dollar or whatever, but he just said, give me a smile. Isn't that so awesome? I wish so much more teenagers were like that. That is just so, so wonderful. Last story, promise. God has a way, and this is, this is just really good. God has a way of allowing us to be at the right place at the right time. I was walking down a dimly lit street late one evening when I heard a muffled scream coming from behind the clump of bushes. Alarmed, I slowed down to listen and panicked when I realized that I was he what I was hearing was sounds of a struggle, heavy grunting, frantic scuffling, and tearing of fabric. Only yards from where I stood, a woman was being attacked. Should I get involved? I was frightened for my own safety and cursed myself for having suddenly decided to take a new route home that night. What if I become another statistic? Shouldn't I just run to the nearest phone and call the police? Although it seemed like an eternity, my deliberations in my head had only taken a few seconds, but already the cries were growing weaker. I knew I had to act fast. How could I walk away from this? No, I resolved that I, can turn, I could not turn my back on the fate of this unknown woman, even if it meant risking my own life. I'm not a brave man, nor am I athletic. I don't know where, I found the moral courage or the physical strength, but once I finally resolved to help the girl, I became strangely transformed. I ran behind the bushes and pulled the ass assailant off the woman. Grappling, we fell to the ground where we wrestled for a few minutes until the attacker jumped up and escaped. Panting hard, I scrambled back upright and approached the girl who was crouched behind the tree crying. In the darkness, I could barely see her outline but I could certainly sense her trembling shock. Not wanting to frighten her further, I at first spoke from a distance. It's okay, I said, soothingly. The man ran away. You're safe now. There was a long pause. Then I heard the words utter in wonder. Dad, is that you? Then from behind the tree stepped out my youngest daughter, Catherine. Do all the good that you can, in all the ways that you can, in all the places that you can, in all the times that you can, in all the people that you can, for as long as you can. Wow, I was really moved. You know, God, like I said before, God puts you in certain places. And this father, walking home, 
taking a different route than he usually does for some weird reason, right? And he hears this this woman behind the bushes and he you know, he's scared. He's not athletic. He's not, you know, courageous. He's not a hero and he's thinking what do I do? Should I just call the police? Should I interfere? And the whole time it was his youngest daughter. Could you imagine the shock on that father's face saving his youngest daughter from being raped? A lot of times things in life happen and we say, oh, that was just luck or that was just a coincidence. I used to say that all the time. However, I've learned over the years, I don't think anything is a coincidence. I think everything is planned and everything happens for a reason, whether it be good, whether it be bad. And I love, love, love the way this guy ends it by saying, and I'm going to read it again because I, I, I believe in it so much and I feel that it's so true that everybody needs to live by this. Do all the good you can in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, all the times that you can, to all the people you can for as long as you can. Thank you so much if you stayed with me the whole time. I know that was very long and I apologize, but these are just really, really good stories that I wanted to share. And I hope it, these stories kind of not make you sad, but I hope they uplift you because they all have like happy endings and that there are good people in this world and there is good in this world. And if we can do good and we can be good, we can be those people that show other people, wow, there are still decent people in this world. So until next time, um, I hope you have a wonderful day and stay sane.